Hello, my name's Gabe and it's time for another Hawkeye Tech Tutorial. Let's begin by unpacking and reviewing the contents of the packaging. In the box, there should be a display, white and black bezels and face plates, a display storage cover, flush mount bracket, thick dash extension, and a bag containing a manual warranty registration card. Your depth finder will also be packed with the transducer of your choice. We'll review the transducer parts list later in this video when we talk about transducer installation. If you do not have any of these items, please contact support at norcrossmarine.com and we'll rush one out to you. Now let's discuss the transducer options available for Hawkeye depth finders. The standard transducers are a transom mount and a plastic through hole. The transom mount is suitable for outboard, inboard outboard, single inboard, or jet drive propelled vessels. The whole dead rise angle must be below 30 degrees and the transom dead rise should be between 3 and 20 degrees. The through hole transducer is suitable for outboard, inboard outboard, single or dual inboard, or jet drive propulsion. The whole dead rise angle must be below 20 degrees, fiberglass or metal and cannot exceed one and a quarter inches in thickness. The hole cannot be constructed of wood. Utilizing shoot through technology, the D10D's transducers can also be glued inside the vessel's hull. Because of the D10DX's transducer's integrated water temperature sensor, they cannot be glued inside the hull. If you think that the transducer that is packed with your depth finder is not suitable for your vessel, contact us and we'll be happy to review your installation plan. We offer a transducer exchange program that allows you to swap your standard transducer for a specialized transducer suitable for just about any installation. The installation process begins by installing the display. You will need a power drill, a two inch hole saw if there's no pre-drilled hole in your dash, wire connectors for connecting the power leads to your vessel's 12 volt system, wire cutting and crimping tools like I have here, and non-adhesive silicone. If you don't have room around your helm area, we offer an adjustable surface mount bracket that can be purchased from our web store. Using the included black and white face plates and bezels, choose one of the four color combinations, all black, all white, or a combination of black and white. Today I'm going to do all black. You simply place the face over the display, make sure to line up the tabs, then you take the bezel, press it on, and turn it clockwise until it snaps. We also have gold and chrome bezels can be purchased on our website to match your factory dash or give your digital depth sounder a custom appearance. Now let's find a location at the helm that will allow you to clearly view to the display during operation. Keep in mind that the wires for the transducer and power must reach the mounting location. Mark the location with a pencil, then check behind the area for wires, switches, etc. that may be damaged during cutting. If these obstructions are present, please use masking tape to hold them out of the way while you cut. In most installations, you would use a two inch hole saw to drill out the mounting hole. In this installation, we already have an empty hole in the dash, so after removing the filler plug, we're ready to insert the gauge. Seal in the exposed wood with the non-adhesive sealant. Insert the display from the front of the mounting location. Feed the wires through the flush mount bracket from behind the mounting location and install the bracket and thumb nut. If the location that you have chosen to mount the depth finder is thicker than the depth finder's display will allow, install the included thick dash extension on the display before putting the flush mount bracket on. Now let's get power to the display. It has no on or off switch, therefore you would need to connect the power harness to a power source that would turn the unit on as the power is applied. A key switch or an on off power switch will be suitable for powering the unit. You simply connect the black wire in the harness to the negative terminal or suitable ground then connect the red wire in the harness to the positive 12 volt switchable power source. Good examples are the key switch or an on off switch or a terminal block. Supply power to the unit by turning on the power source that you've attached the red and black wires to. The audible alarm should beep three times while the display illuminates all the LCD graphics for two seconds. Three dash lines will then be shown on the LCD display. If the display does not turn on, please refer to the manual for troubleshooting tips. Once you have verified that the depth founder is power powering on and off properly, it's time to install the transducer. Now let's get to know your depth finder. We'll start with the shallow water alarm. The shallow water alarm function can be set for depths ranging from 3 to 200 feet and triggers an alarm when the depth is less than the setting. You must be in depth sounder mode to adjust this setting. To set the shallow water alarm, First make sure that the display is showing the current depth. 
On non-temperature models like the D10D, press and release the up key. On models with temperature like the D10DX, press and hold the up and down keys for approximately three seconds until the upward and downward facing triangles illuminate. Then press the up key to enter the shallow water alarm. The bell icon will illuminate and the upward facing triangle will blink. Pressing the up key will increase the selected value. Pressing the down key will reduce the value. Pressing and releasing the key will change the value in one foot increments per second. Holding down the key will change the value in nine foot increments per second. After the desired setting is achieved, the display will return to normal operation after five seconds. The upward facing triangle and the bell indicator will now be illuminated to indicate that a shallow water alarm is set. When triggered, the depth alarm sounds an audible buzzer for 10 seconds while flashing the warning LED and the upward facing triangle on the display. After 10 seconds, the audible alarm mutes and the warning LED and the icons continue to blink until the depth increases or the alarm is reset. To reset the alarm, repeat the previous steps. The deep alarm function can be set for depths ranging to 3 to 200 feet and triggers an alarm when the depth is more than the setting. To set the deep water alarm, first make sure that the display is showing the current depth. On non-temperature models like the D10D, press and release the down key. On models with temperature like the D10DX, press and hold the up and down keys for approximately three seconds until the upward and downward facing triangles illuminate. Then press the down key to enter the deep water alarm. The bell icon will illuminate and the downward facing triangle will blink. Pressing the up key will increase the selected value. Pressing the down key will reduce the value. Pressing and releasing the key will change the value in one foot increments per second. Holding down the key will change the value in nine foot increments per second. After the desired setting is achieved, the display will return to normal operation after about five seconds. The downward facing triangle and the bell indicator will now be illuminated to indicate that a deep water alarm is set. When triggered, the depth alarm sounds an audible buzzer for 10 seconds while flashing the warning LED and the downward facing triangle on the display. After 10 seconds, the audible alarm mutes and the warning LED and the icons continue to blink until the depth decreases or the alarm is reset. To reset the alarm, repeat the previous steps. The kill offset feature is used to adjust the depth readings displayed by the device to compensate for the depth of the water required for your vessel to operate safely typically referred to as your vessel's draft. For example, if your boat's draft is set to three feet, the kill offset feature should be set to three feet. The device will then subtract three feet from the actual depth readings and display this figure as the depth. If the water depth is five feet and the kill offset is set to three feet, the depth will be displayed as two feet, indicating to the operator that there is two feet of safe operating water. The maximum kill offset setting is 20 feet and can be set in one tenth of a foot increments. The display will show three dash lines when a negative value occurs due to the kill offset subtraction. To set the kill offset, first make sure that the display is showing the current depth. Now press and hold the up and down keys for approximately six seconds until the KO icon begins to blink. Release the keys. Press the up key to increase the kill offset value. Press the down key to reduce the value. The display will return to normal operation mode after five seconds if no keys are pressed. The KO icon will remain illuminated in the top left hand corner indicating that the depth readings are adjusted to the keel offset setting. Finally, let's set the units of measure for the readings. The two settings available are feet and meters. To set the units of measure, first make sure that the display is showing the current depth. Press and hold the up and down keys until the current unit of measure begins to blink, approximately eight seconds. Release the keys. To set the units to feet, press the up key. FT will flash on the display. To set the units to meters, press the down key. M will flash on the display. The display will return to the normal operation mode automatically after five seconds. This step finder's auto ranging, auto sensitivity features means you'll never have to worry about adjustments. Simply turn the power on and you're ready to go. 
The depth sounder emits sound signals that travel through the water and then calculates the amount of time elapsed while the signal traveled down to the bottom and returned back to the transducer. This time is calculated by a microprocessor and displayed as a depth reading. Extremely dirty water, a very soft bottom, high speeds, deep water, aeration, or a combination of the above will result in incomplete or inaccurate readings. Under these conditions, variable readings or three dashes will be displayed. If you are not happy with the on-water performance of your depth sounder, we're here to help. Rest assured that this depth sounder is engineered to the highest standards and is part of the best-selling family of depth sounders in the world. It is highly likely that your dissatisfaction is due to improper installation. Nine times out of ten, performance issues are the result of improper installation of the transducer. I cannot stress enough, the transducer must be mounted so that it has an uninterrupted supply of clean, aeration-free water. If the depth finder gives accurate readings while the vessel is sitting still, but changes to dash lines while the vessel is moving, it is almost always the result of aeration to the transducer face. In this case, you should review the transducer installation guide and adjust the transducer as suggested. Thanks again for purchasing a Hawkeye depth finder. Here at Norcross Marine Products, we strive for 100% customer satisfaction. If you have a problem with your depth sounder, first review the operator's manual, then rewatch this video. If you can't find a solution to the problem, feel free to call us at 888-7-NORCROSS during normal business hours. 24-hour technical support is available online at hawkeyeelectronics.com where you can search our online knowledge base for the latest troubleshooting and FAQs or post your own question for our support staff. For one-on-one -on -one support, please email support at norcrossmarine.com. Now get out there and enjoy your freedom.